Yeah, good morning, everyone. So, moving ahead with the last group presentation, that was basically on internet insecurity. So, today our group number four, comprising of myself, Colonel Jagveer, Prasad Deshmukh, and Sanjay Parsana, we are going to present the case study that is protecting the Chida. So, the case study is all about a company, New House Cheese Company. It all started way back in 1811 when Cole New House he immigrated from the Wales and he established the cheese making company. It got very popular. Yeah, in between they faced the Great Depression, economic depression, but uh, they innovated their business. They tied up with the supermarkets, and they had a tagline from Wales with love. Later on, uh, in early 2000, the fifth generation Chadwick New House he took over, and the company invested lot of lot of amount in the digitalization of the precision control monitors and devices. <coughs> so basically, there are six characters in this case study. There is CEO Chadwick Robert Newhouse, also with the nickname Chad, and then uh, CISO Frank Arman, the CEO Bruce Boyle, the CFO Jenny Crickshank, and deputy to CEO Sara, and a cyber security consultant Jack Perim. So basically, the case study it uh, starts. With a scenario where the Chad, the CEO of the company, he had just wired dollar forty-nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine to a someone unknown person, because the company has is a victim of a ransomware attack, and the hackers, they have actually gained access to the company system, and they have demonstrated uh, the shutdown of one of the temperature control critical devices, and they also claim that they have access to certain sensitive recipe files of the organization, and on the advice of his legal uh, lawyer. The CEO has paid the ransom here to the attackers. Now the case, uh, this uh, uh, the current scenario is about a meeting which is taking place between the top executives, and the CEO Chad is really in a very angry mood, and all the top executives they are not able to make eye contact with him. So what do we do? Yes, Mr. Chad, I have been uh, seeing some new. Uh, New intrusion monitoring systems on the market. I suggest we increase the budget for them, and also we have to review our incident response protocol because SEC will come knocking to see our plans and procedures. So, how much we have already spent on the system? About six million dollars. Six million dollars, and still the breaches have increased. So now there is an uncomfortable silence in the meeting room, and then uh, you know all of a sudden. a uh, lady voice that comes from the back of the room and she is actually sara the deputy to the ceo so why are our system even online shouldn't family recipes just be locked up on a paper why do we need them digitally and the pasteurization equipment and all so sara briefed uh, all the meeting heads about uh, she, uh, a new, new risk management process that she had read it stated that the overly complicated software system are uh, making organization more vulnerable to such attacks and it's not only the software system but also the anywhere and anytime access to the critical system uh, of the organization many consultant recommend that the organization should put the humans back into the process and reduce the digitization Now again, uh, this uh, scene actually it uh, shifts three weeks after that prior crisis meeting, and on a workstation, the CEO and Frank, the CISO, and Sara, they are on the workstation, and uh, there is a fourth guy, the cyber security consultant, Jack Pay. Mr. Jack, as you can see, the sensors in our tank send us real real time data about everything. It tells us about our impurities, our temperature, and. Uh, Bacteria, bacteria content. It saved us millions of dollars. And the system is networked. Of course. Otherwise, we have to be in person monitoring the systems always. So if anything goes out of order, we will get alerts. So this is very crucial to our cost savings. And who has the access to the system? Basically, it's anyone with a login. We usually give it to two or three people. Mostly, it's me. Last time, I even uh, logged into the system from my hotel. So the process uh, continued for three weeks. Uh, in the process, the tech guy revisited all the processes of the factories and understood how the processes worked. He mostly followed a four-step plan. 
the first step was identifying the most critical information and the processes he visited each process uh, talked to the stakeholders and understood of what how the th- process exactly works the second uh, step was mapping the digital terrain in which those process rested it uh, consisted of uh, understanding the hardware and software part of the system also how the ne- network is structured and not only about the technology it also involved understanding the how humans are interacting in the system uh, understanding the supply chain and everything third step it was the uh, most important step uh in this step the inputs from the first uh, step and the second step were uh, used and uh, the uh, uh the most critical likely part of the attack was fa- identified based on the criticality and the openness of the system in the fourth step uh, they generated the options uh, um, about the attack based on the criticality the attack which is most likely to happen and how critical it is and during the steps of the evaluation we can see that jack and every senior executive have undergone various intensive process of understand understanding the system so they were already exhausted and the kind of uh, they got an insight like how they were really into digitization that like how much deep they have invested into the uh, digital networks so from the consultant's perspective he found three points of failure and he he briefly uh, uh, sorted out into three categories three are outcomes in the first one is he found four pathways into the network and uh, hacker access industrial control systems and the third one is one system was compromised by bot and further his recommendations was that uh, the first one he Uh, uh evaluated the thermization process which he advised the, them to take it completely offline and uh, completely offline and then the second process was he advised them to uh, remove the the uh, uh, network controls network temperature controls and automatic automated temperature adjustments or uh, the other option was to keep them or and uh, backstop them with human manual controls and the third one he found that during the penetration testing done by himself he found that he was able to take control of the access con- he was taking control of the control systems and was also able to uh, access all, all of the recipes which was a huge uh, eye opener to chat he was especially very shocked to know about that his recipes could be accessible which could really hit his bottom line so we see that in the meeting a very heated discussion and debate takes place on the various suggestion offered by the cyber security consultant so whole point of going digital was to save money going offline would kill the bottom line look mr bruce the goal is to take back to your stone age it just to reduce your digital pathways the most likely vectors that any attack could possibly happen so even so even though uh, there is very likelihood of uh, attacks so i would uh, really suggest uh, to you to look back uh, look at the uh, situation here and uh, and make corrections so you want us to roll back the business 20 years for a one in a million chance look frank i came here because you were attacked by a ransomware but frankly ransomware doesn't scare me listeria does if you check recent uh, health hazards created by companies you can really see the consequences of a major catastrophe so it could really affect every company so just to give an idea about a uh, ransomware and how it works basically the hacker or the bad guy either he creates the ransomware himself or he can buy a at least from the cyber criminals in fact you will be surprised nowadays there is something called as ras ransomware as a service they are business models and they are creating and selling all these uh, ransomware software to the criminals and after that the cyber criminals basically uh, exploit the social engineering skills and all and then he enters the access to the system and he encrypts the it system and the data whatever possible and uh, basically the main intention is to you know ask for the money ransom and at times they ask in a cryptocurrency form also so the audience uh, we would like to know your opinion should the chat implement consultants recommendation
for the consultants uh, input is that we take most critical parts of the value chain of the uh, digital environment for protection and we don't essentially move back 20 years that we remove all of uh, digitalization or digitization which has been built in so this the this is an in between solution which will ensure that some form of optimization is obtained through the digitization process but at the same time the critical assets are protected so it would be uh, uh, in my opinion good to move in that direction identify which are the most critical assets and move them offline anyone any other suggestions yeah yes, no, yes they should uh, go ahead with that and uh, we had already covered uh, regarding this we had uh, there was a presentation also that was that uh, cyber informed engineering which basically says that your critical systems uh, uh, should have a contingency plan uh, already mapped out and uh, so that uh, anytime such a thing happens you can always uh, as far as possible try to keep them out of the <coughs> digital connectivity uh, loop so that uh, nobody can uh, attack them um, so yes uh, definitely uh, that particular concept works out very well and co will continue to work out well in the near future also Yeah, even I would suggest an in-between solution because going completely offline might not be that useful because, for example, the sen sensors might be tracking the temperature and all and we might need the help of IOD to you know, track those changes and even for the predictive maintenance of the machines that are being employed, it will help in increasing the efficiency of the system in the long term. So completely moving offline, offline just for the cyber security risk sake might not be a fruitful option in the long term so but just as sir mentioned we can identify the critical aspects of the business and then just move them alone offline or just restrict the access within the you no know, local environment or something like that can be pursued okay uh, i have a question if you go uh, back or roll back the system to manual controls okay. can there still be manual errors because when human beings control uh, uh, temperature or monitor temperature, you are trusting human beings. And that's why you go for automation because human beings, human errors are quite possible. So you go for automation. And in automation, you have other problems created by humans. So uh, do you see the solution as going back or something else? Because human errors can still happen. Yes, sir. Uh, you are right, sir. In fact, uh, the errors can be there. In fact, the earlier when uh, the company was not, had not digitalized, they were facing a lot of problems. There were a lot of wastages were there because of the human er error and all. And that was the purpose they went for digitalization. And just for the sake of that, uh, actually, we have displayed some of the pros and cons. So in case the company goes for a mix, uh, you know, system of uh, manual and combination of the digital, so certain pros are there, actually. Yeah, obviously, like uh, uh, the first one, in case of PROS, obviously there will be isolation and prevention of the critical system so that uh, there is a least damage. So we have something called as, uh, you know, theory of least privileges. So in case someone assesses to that, uh, so he's not able to assess the to in totality or the complete system or so that he assesses only the compartmentalization is there. Again, uh, in case the second point, what we have uh, displayed here that uh, the production, in case some, someone assess the attacker, so the complete production may not be hindered. Some of the manual system may still be as a backup or as a parallel system, they still will be working. And thirdly, the sensitive data that is more secured in an offline mode because we might be having trustful and faithful employees. Obviously, that can be debatable again, as you said, sir. And fourthly, there might be less chances of unauthorized access. That, that will obviously be there, but uh, yeah, that chances can be reduced. Again, coming on to the some of the uh, cons. Since uh, firstly the company has done a lot of investment in terms of money in the automation and digitalization, so now again reverting back to the manual mode, so it is all on the cost of that automation and money spent. So it is something like a sunken cost that money has already been spent. And secondly, yeah, the investors once they will come to know about this thing, that might affect the reputation of the company and the trust uh, you know, in the mind of investors and public. And thirdly, obviously, the raised cost might be there because they have to hire faithful employees and trained, train them. 
and uh, the skill enhancement that is required. And fourthly, during the initial uh, stage, actually, the setting up of the parallel system, there might be some hindrance to the operations. That will obviously be there. Yeah, so uh, this case, uh, as you presented, illustrates uh, the cyber security challenges to the industry, particularly industrial automation when it's going towards uh, IoT, uh, IoT devices, Industry 4.0. There are a lot of pluses, as you showed, and there are also risk uh, and major risk, uh, which can uh, create financial loss, but also, as you pointed out, loss to lives, you know, listeria, where it's about changing the composition of a uh, food product. You know, if you consume that product, which is actually got um, produced, not following the standards, then you are eating something which is. Uh, you don't know, you can die if you eat that product. So the kind of consequence that if industrial controls are affected by cyber attackers is uh, very, very high and severe. And uh, also you see this case highlights the ransomware attack. Okay. So also already there have been major ransomware attacks like the WannaCry, NordPetya, which happened at the country level. It's like, you know, uh, uh, the WannaCry was possibly uh, done by North Korea and North Petya by Russia. So this is also part of um, cyber attacks at a national level. I, I do not know for sure, but these are actually observations in reports. So, uh, and they say North Petya case, um, they actually encrypted your machines and uh, they asked for ransom. But even if you pay the ransom, they did not release the machines. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it says uh, you have to pay $49,999 and your machine is released. And if that happens, it is fine, you can go on. But if, okay. as in the case of NordPetya, if they don't release the machine even after pay making the payment, it's like killing your systems. So the the consequence of ransomware, uh, which is very much highlighted in this case, is very high at the moment. And in terms of threat intelligence, that is a very high threat in today's world, particularly in industrial controls. And uh, solutions are still evolving. You showed some of them. And uh, let us move on and uh, move on with risk management in the next session also. And uh, in the next session, of course, you have someone from industry coming and perhaps you get more insights. Okay. Yeah.